One of the simplest ways to transform our inner conversations is by using affirmations. Neville Goddard greatly emphasized the importance of affirmations in his teachings. We know that our minds are constantly engaged in internal dialogues about ourselves, others, and the world around us, whether we are aware of it or not. Affirmations allow us to consciously choose our thoughts and direct them toward positive self-talk. You can experience a complete transformation of your self-concept through the consistent use of affirmations. But I have noticed that many individuals use affirmations in a counterproductive way, which not only fails to benefit them, but also leaves them feeling discouraged. In this video, we will delve into the reasons behind this phenomenon and provide you with strategies to avoid such pitfalls. So be prepared to gain an entirely new perspective on the concept of affirmations. If you have ever struggled with using affirmations effectively, you will not want to miss this opportunity to learn and grow. So watch this video till the end, and if you are new to our channel, subscribe to it and press the bell icon for more content on manifestation. So let's get started. Using affirmations to transform your inner conversations is one of the easiest and most effective ways to improve your life. We all have inner conversations going on in our minds throughout the day, whether we're aware of them or not. These conversations can be positive and uplifting or negative and damaging. The good news is that we have the power to choose our thoughts and change our inner dialogue through the use of affirmations. However, it's important to understand why you are using affirmations in the first place. If you're using affirmations to try to change external circumstances or get something or someone while remaining in a state of lack, you're likely to be disappointed. Affirmations work best when they are used to transform yourself from within rather than as a means of controlling the outside world. When you use affirmations to transform your inner dialogue, you are essentially creating a new story about yourself and your life. By changing your thoughts and beliefs, you can change your reality. But affirmations alone are not enough. You also need to do the inner work to back them up. According to Neville Goddard's teachings, the first step in using affirmations effectively is to become aware of your current thought patterns and beliefs. What stories are you telling yourself about yourself, others, and the world? Are these stories serving you or holding you back? Once you become aware of your current beliefs, you can start to challenge them and replace them with new, positive affirmations. But it's not enough to simply repeat affirmations without any feeling or conviction. You need to truly feel the truth of the affirmation in your bones. Visualize what it would feel like to have your wish fulfilled and allow yourself to fully experience that feeling. This will make your affirmations more powerful and effective. It's also important to approach affirmations with the right intention. If you are using affirmations as a means of controlling external circumstances, you're missing the point. Affirmations are a tool for transforming yourself from within, not for manipulating the outside world. When you approach affirmations intending to improve yourself and your inner dialogue, the external circumstances will often fall into place naturally. Another common mistake people make with affirmations is to use them in a robotic, unfeeling way. When you repeat affirmations without any real emotion or conviction, they lose their power. The key is to feel the truth of the affirmation in your bones. This means allowing yourself to fully experience the feeling of having your wish fulfilled and allowing that feeling to permeate your being. While many people have experienced great success with affirmations, there are also cases where they don't seem to work at all. The first reason why affirmations may not work is that you are trying to use them to get something outside of yourself or to force yourself to believe something that you don't actually believe. For example, if you are trying to manifest wealth but are doing so from a place of lack and scarcity, simply repeating the affirmation, I am rich, is unlikely to be effective. It may even make you feel worse about your current financial situation. The reason for this is that affirmations are most effective when they are spoken from a place of truth and alignment with your current reality. If you are in a state of lack, it's important to first shift your mindset to one of abundance before using affirmations to manifest more wealth. The second reason why affirmations may not be working is that you are repeating them in a mechanical and uninspired way. Affirmations should be spoken with intention, feeling, and emotion to create a powerful vibration that attracts what you desire. If you are simply going through the motions of repeating affirmations without any real belief or emotion behind them, they are unlikely to have much impact on your reality. Instead, take some time to connect with the feeling of what it would be like to have your desire manifest in your life, and then speak your affirmations from that place of deep emotion and belief. Another common mistake that people make when using affirmations is that they only use them sporadically or inconsistently. Affirmations should be practiced consistently and with regularity to be effective. 
This means that you should set aside time each day to speak your affirmations and make them a regular part of your daily routine. It's also important to stay committed to your affirmations over time, even if you don't see immediate results. Remember that manifestation is a process and it may take some time for your affirmations to begin to show up in your life. Another potential obstacle to using affirmations effectively is that you may be sabotaging yourself with negative self-talk or limiting beliefs. If you have deep-seated beliefs about yourself or your ability to manifest your desires, these beliefs can override the positive affirmations that you are trying to speak into your life. For example, if you have a belief that you are unworthy of success or that you are not capable of achieving your goals, no amount of positive affirmations will be able to counteract that underlying belief. To overcome these obstacles, it may be necessary to work on reprogramming your subconscious mind through techniques like hypnosis or neuro-linguistic programming. It is also important to remember that affirmations are just one tool in manifestation toolkit. While they can be incredibly powerful, they should be used in conjunction with other techniques like visualization, gratitude, and action steps to create a well-rounded approach to manifestation. For example, if you are trying to manifest a new job, you might use affirmations to create a positive mindset around your job search, but you should also take action by networking, applying for jobs, and preparing for interviews. Neville Goddard says, there is no one to change but oneself, that self is simply your awareness, your consciousness, and the world in which it lives is determined by the concept you hold of oneself. It is to consciousness that we must turn to the only reality. For there is no clear conception of the origin of phenomena, except that consciousness is all and all is consciousness. When we have a desire, it's because our desire is making us feel a certain way, or we know that it will make us feel a certain way. On the other hand, we know what we don't want because it makes us feel bad, and we don't want that feeling anymore. In other words, we want to feel good. Yet I often hear people say that their affirmations make them feel bad, nervous, or anxious. This occurs when people repeat affirmations that conflict with their current state or feelings. For example, if you're single and missing your significant other, and constantly think about them being distant and indifferent towards you while affirming that they love and want you, it's unlikely to make you feel good. Similarly, if you're struggling financially and constantly worrying about paying bills, affirming that you're wealthy and money comes to you easily might not make you feel any better. To determine whether your affirmations are effective, pay attention to your recurring beliefs and feelings. Have they changed? Do they align with your affirmations? If not, you may be using affirmations ineffectively. Fortunately, there's a way to make affirmations work for you. Use them to plant a seed. Just like when you plant a seed, you don't force it to grow. You simply provide the necessary conditions and let nature take its course. Remember that all your desires, no matter how external they may seem, originate from within you and are already yours. Your desire, feelings, lack of love, or lack thereof all come from you. Therefore, the key to change is to change yourself. If you have a desire, you already know how it feels to have it, or you wouldn't have the desire in the first place. Before affirming or visualizing anything, focus on feeling what it would be like to have your desire. Then use affirmations to reinforce that feeling, plant the seed, and nurture it until it grows. Now let's discuss how you can make affirmations work for you. First, you need to avoid using affirmations from an opposing state, as this will only lead to frustration. Instead, think of affirmations as planting a seed with the intention that it will grow in good soil. It's important to note that trying to convince yourself with affirmations doesn't work. The intention behind your chosen affirmations is what matters. When you affirm, don't force anything or believe it right away. You won't believe an affirmation that goes against your old beliefs overnight. Affirmations work by planting a new seed in your mind, which will eventually sprout. You can water your seed daily by saying your affirmations to replace old thoughts, but don't try to force yourself to believe them. Remember, affirmations are meant to change you and your thoughts, not something or someone outside of you. When used correctly, affirmations can replace unwanted and destructive thoughts, which can manifest into your reality. Affirmations are a powerful tool that can transform your life, but they should be fun and not a chore. If your affirmations don't make you feel good, then it's time to revisit the intention behind them. When you check your feelings, you can identify the source of those feelings. If you're feeling bad, it's likely because you're dwelling in a state of resistance and focusing on what you don't want. However, if you allow yourself to feel what it's like to have your desire, you can shift your focus to what you do want and attract it into your life. 
It's important to approach affirmations from a place of calmness and detachment rather than fear or desperation. When you plant your seed and affirm your desire, do so slowly and steadily while allowing yourself to feel the joy and excitement of having it. Don't force yourself to believe in your affirmations, but instead trust that they will manifest in your physical world because it's the law of the universe. By approaching affirmations in this way, you'll be surprised at how quickly and easily they can reflect in your life. When you use your affirmations with a smile on your face and a sense of playfulness, you'll feel good and attract more positive experiences into your life. Remember, affirmations should be fun, not a chore or something you feel like you must do. When you approach them with the right intention and mindset, they can transform your life in amazing ways. So have fun with your affirmations and watch as they manifest your desires into reality. I hope I was able to deliver a good analysis of this concept by Neville Goddard. And of course, this doesn't mean we agree with every single thing he said or believed in, because in the end, everyone will form his or her own opinion, and that is why we are analyzing and discussing his ideas and methods to fully understand his approach and general ideas, as he was a great teacher and inspired millions of people around the world. If you want to share your opinion, comment down below this video. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please subscribe to it and press the bell icon for more interesting, informative, and helpful videos on manifestation. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.